Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I would say welcome back, but it's a brand new channel, so welcome. So uh, what I have done is I have made a granny hexagon cardi, but it's a bit special. Okay, everyone's been going crazy for Barbie lately, and I thought, why not jump on the bandwagon? So I jumped on the Barbie bandwagon, and I made this. See this here? It's just so freaking cool, one of a kind. Um, so I haven't exactly done a tutorial for it, however, I've done a like, this is what I did to make it kind of video. Um, I can explain a few of the little bits right here. So basically two hexagons, which there is like a million different um, tutorials on YouTube for. So I don't really want to do a, a hexagon tutorial because like they've been done to death, they're everywhere, TikTok, YouTube, everything. So two hexagons, um, and then I extended the sleeves to fit me. I'm going to try this on in a minute, but... I'm just showing you for now. So I did a, a back loop, front loop type of ribbing on it and I did five panels of Barbie. So pretty much for the Barbie, all I did, I went onto Pinterest, absolutely love Pinterest. Let me just get the Pinterest for you. I'll show you exactly which um, pixel grid. So I used this pixel grid and then I just did single crochet and pretty much just replicated any bits that were white I didn't do those, I just kind of did them as the normal colour. So, yay, I think it turned out pretty well. So, yeah, let me put this on and show you how it's fitting. Okay, I've got it on, I love it. So, there's the back. Okay, uh, I think I did five rows of what I did, first of all, um, once I'd sewed it all together, and then for this, I did one um, whole row around the entire thing and around the bottom. Uh, I did a whole row of just like U US terms, double crochet. And then I just did back loop, front loop, back loop, front loop, uh, and five rows of that. And that's all I did and it's nice and stretchy rather than like going up and down each one because that just takes forever. But yeah, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna now shoot you off back in time so that uh, you can see basically how I did it. And also I didn't do it with this background because I made my dream yarn wall there um, halfway through doing this. So that's why it took me three weeks. But yeah, enjoy the process. I already have a pink cardigan. Should I make another one? Oh, so beautiful. Okay, everybody's obsessed with hexagon cardigans. So I thought that would be pretty cool if I did a hexagon cardigan in all different shades of pinks. And then if I did some little teensy, like if I get the pixel pictures of Pinterest and then I just kind of single crochet, maybe four or five, depending on how long I want to do it. I could do it a bit longer. I don't know at this point. All I know is that I've got to get the pink wool um, and I'm going to match it to make these little squares in the middle, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I went on the knitting network. Right, Sneaky, you're going to have to move. You are a glamorous assistant, but you're going to have to move. Excuse me. Um... I went on Knitting Network and these were half price. So these are like £2.50 a ball uh, for Patio Betty, I think it is. Uh, it is colour 554 05 and I got them in lot 0123. So I got, I honestly had no idea how much I would need. So I got 10 balls. So here we go. So that is going to be each side of the cardigan. I also, I got three of these and I have no idea what I'm going to do with them, but they are so pretty. I'm thinking I might do some kind of mermaid theme thing with those, but I don't know. But we've got these, so what I'm going to do is colour match it to things that are currently in my stash. Now, my stash is a bit big, so here are the pinks of my stash. So I'm going to get one of these balls out. Oh, it's so soft. It's so soft. Um. Okay, so pretty. Look at the colours. I haven't got any lights or anything on. This is just natural light, so yeah. Uh, let's colour match it. So I happen to have this luminous pink colour and I think it's a bit too bright, so I'm not going to go with that. I like a luminous pink. Um, this one's like a step down from how luminous that one is, but it's still a bit too neon. What else have we got? This is pretty. Yeah, this one's kind of subtle. It's a little bit too purpley though. So that's a no-go, that one. Um, this one's cute. 
This one is Fondant by Stylecraft uh, and that one matches. It looks a little bit thicker but it'd be fine. Uh, a random crochet hook in there. Oh my god. Does anybody have crochet hooks that you use so much that it just wears away? Just me? No? What else have I got in here? That one's quite nice. It's very icy. Hmm. Uh, that one's kind of okay. Um, I think I might need to go to the wool shop. Oh dear. I think I need to go to the wool shop. So we're on our way to the wool shop and we've come across, you can't see it, but uh, there's a charity shop behind. There's a small human. So the charity shop right there, we're going to go in and have a look because there's always like little things that you can find. So this charity shop's quite close to me. It's about 10 miles away. Um, I found all these crochet patterns, which honestly I've never come across these in a charity shop before. And the whole lot was three quid. They were supposed to be 20 pence each, but the woman said, you know what, I don't want to count them. So just three quid for the lot. This is pretty cool. Um, there's a hoodie that comes up um, in one of these and I really want to make this hoodie. There is. So I might recreate that in a future video. So that would be cool. Uh, so we went to Abakan after this around the corner and uh, I got some wool for my project. Here it comes. Okay, we have arrived. This is where we're going. This is a really good place. Oops. If you want to get wool. So yeah. Okay, I have to find something to match this. So any of the pinks, I'm going to try and match them to any of the DKs in here. That's pretty. BBDK. Hmm. Okay, that's a start. It's too much choice. Oh my god. <gasps> I can make Barbie sparkly. Wow, that's such a good idea. Okay, it's on the maybe list. Okay, that one kind of matches. I don't need that much wool. Um, bit too illuminous. Let's have a look. Oh, now that one. That one seems perfect. Let's have a look. Okay, so it's bonus DK uh, in Cupid. So I like that one. Let's go with that one. Okay, now I need to find one that's light and not as like icy pink as mine. Hmm. Right, the search continues. Uh, ooh. Oh, now this is good. What shade is that? Powder pink. Hmm. That might work. Okay, let's buy these. I was actually raking through the shelves and I found soft peach. And when you try and look at them in like natural light, that one looks a bit more purpley. So I might actually go with the soft peach instead. They look good. One of the things I really like about coming in here as well is that if you've got a big project in mind, you can find like a lot of wool, but a bit cheaper than you would normally get it if you were shopping online. So all these colours here, like £18 for like one, two, three, for like ten balls of wool. That's really good. Oh, I like these colours. Sometimes they do mystery bags in here, but I've not seen a mystery bag in here for a while. But they have all of these as well. So if you want to make an absolutely chunky like scarf or something for winter, then there's money off all of these massive ones here. That's nice. Hang on. That is nice. There's actually some pretty good reductions here. Like this one, uh, cabaret. If you're looking to stock up for Christmas. I've already got one of those in the house though. This is nice. Hmm. They've got these huge ones. I don't even know. Wow, that is a good reduction. I do not need this. I must put it back. Okay, note to self, I've actually been wanting to make um, a sofa for my cats because they are spoiled rotten. So, note to self, they do all the foam in this shop. So, yeah. Right, okay, I'm going to go and pay for these now. I mean, I really don't like knitting, but I could start knitting. Okay, so this is me working on the second uh, half of the cardigan because I'd already taken the first half shopping to colour match. Um, so, yeah, there's a cat behind me, as you can see. I've always got a crochet buddy close. 
Okay, I'm up to row 15. It's the next day. I think I've worked about maybe three hours on it. So it's come together nicely, um, but I think I'm going to need at least another 10 rows before I attempt to even try this on. But I like the way the colours are working up. So whilst I've been doing this, Sneaky has been supervising the entire time. So cute. So I ended up doing 23 rounds. I did say I was going to do 25, but 23 fit me pro like properly enough on the arm for me to do nine extra rows, then a cuff, and then I extended it um, down the bottom by 11 rows. And you can see behind me that like some of the boxes in the cabinets are missing because we're actually in the middle of doing the craft room, which you are going to see in the next clip.
Okay, it is an actual tip in here because I'm still in the middle of like doing my craft room. So, right, this is a patch I've made. I'm going to show you what I'm doing for this. So, because this is 23 squares along, I've got my two colours that I got from the shop before. So, because it's 23 squares along, I'm going to chain 24. So, I'm going to grab, um, I think I'm going to make a patch with this dark colour as the background. And then this is going to be Barbie. So, I'm going to chain 24. Uh, and then I'll meet you back. Right, I've just had to set up my ring light because um, it's British summertime, so it's absolutely chucking it down outside. And then a load of dark clouds came over, so I've put my light on. Right, I've chained 24, and then because there's 23 stitches, what I'm going to do is I'm going to not use the one that is on the hook. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to just literally single crochet into every single one along the line so there's my first one here comes oh my god it's so fiddly uh here is my second one etc so i'm gonna go all the way along and then i should end up with 23 so i will meet you back here when okay, i've done 23 okay let me just uh take that off my hook so i've done 23 all the way back along obviously the first chain was 24 but when you turn that takes one off and then you've got 23. Here's one that I did before and I messed this one up. Um, I think I missed a row out somewhere here, I don't know. Um, but it just came up shorter than all my other patches. Um, but I'll talk you through what I did because, you know, somebody's going to find this useful. So I'm going to put my hook back in. And then what I'm actually going to do, because I want a little bit of distance between each barbie, I'm going to add like another row onto this before I start switching between the colours for the pixel pattern. So I'm just going to do another row of single crochet, there should be 23 stitches, and then I will meet you back here again. Just an FYI, I work into my first stitches on each row, so yes I've chained one, but I'm still going to work into that first stitch with a single crochet, and then carry along all the way along, and that will give me 23 stitches. Okay, I've done another 23 stitches. So, right, just move this aside because that's probably just going to go in my pile of things that I didn't do properly. Okay, right, looking at this pattern. So I've basically done like one, two rows already because the chain row, I'm not counting. That 24 chains doesn't count. So there's my first row of 23. These nails are so good for pointing. Uh, there's my second row of 23. Now I'm going to come in at this side. So what I would need to do is one normal single crochet in here with this dark pink colour. And then I'm going to do that single crochet. But I'm not going to finish it in this colour. I'm going to bring in the lighter colour. So I'm going to show you what I did. Well, what I'm doing or what I'm going to do. So we need to make one normal one. So... I've not chained one yet, so I need to chain one from my previous row, and then I need to go into my first stitch here. So there is my first one, and just complete it because the next um, like tile or square is still this colour. So now I'm going to go into the second one, I'm going to yarn over, pull it through, but I'm not going to complete it because I need to start with this colour. So I'm going to leave a nice tail that I can weave in later, add it on. And then I'm just going to complete that stitch with that colour. So this dark pink stitch is still complete. But now you're ready to kind of move on with this colour to make the bottom of Barbie's shoulders or neck. Here there are 12 of these different coloured squares. So obviously I'm kind of working in the opposite from this. But you can see what I mean. So I've done one, two. I've completed this second stitch in my new colour. I'm going to do 12. But on the 11th one, I'm going to be changing colours back. So I'm going to do 11 normal single crochets in the light pink. And on the 12th single crochet, I'm going to complete that one in the background colour. So I'll show you what I mean. Here, I've done one, two, completed with this Barbie colour. I'm going to do a single crochet. And what I'm also going to do when I get my hook through is I'm going to make sure that... Hang on a second, I'm so tangled up. Right, this one, keep out the background colour I'm going to carry through um, because I don't want it shown behind. I just think that looks messy and I don't want it getting caught on whatever I'm wearing underneath the cardigan. So there's my first piece of Barbie. Don't worry, you can pull the stitches tighter as you go on. Okay, second single crochet in there like that. Just keep pulling things that they will tighten themselves up. So this tail should just be hanging out because you're going to weave that in afterwards. 
Okay, third one, just making sure that I keep the tail, or the background colour, not the tail, keeping the background colour in there. Okay, so that's three of them. Okay, right, I have done 11 stitches across. I need to do my 12th one. So for my 12th one, let me just get all tightened up here. So 12th one, I'm going to start it as normal, yarn over, pull it through, and then I'm going to drop that Barbie colour and I'm going to switch back to background and I'm going to complete the stitch in the background colour. So just let me pull Barbie tight there, okay? And then you just want to complete this row in the background colour. So let me just go ahead and complete it without pulling that through. What I'm going to do is carry through the Barbie colour. Some people, I don't know, might snip off or might just leave it there to go up, but I just want to carry it through because the cardigan is like totally different shades of pink all over the place. So it's not really going to bother me if you can see this through a little bit. So I'm going to complete there. I'll meet you back at the end of the row and show you what I do to turn the corner. Okay, right, so I've completed this row. There should still be 23 stitches. So we had two in background colour and then we had 12 in Barbie colour and then we did another nine in background colour and I've carried Barbie through there. Okay, so I've got to the end of the row. I'm just going to bash the camera. I'm so professional. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do there. And then what I'll do is I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn. And because I go into the first single crochet, I just need to make sure that I take Barbie colour with me. So I'm going to go in the first one and see how the hook is there so I can carry Barbie. So take this through and then single crochet and then you're good to go with carrying the Barbie colour through. This here, if you just make sure that you pull it like that and then straighten it out, it won't poke out as much. But even if it pokes out, like... On the wrong side of the cardigan you can fix it just by making it poke out on the wrong side of the cardigan so that it's not going to show when you're wearing it so i'm going to go along now according to the pixel grid we are now over here so we have on we've just completed this row here i'm not doing the white ones in a different color because i just don't want to so we've done this one went all the way along and now we've turned so we need to do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten in background color on this tenth one we're going to switch to barbie and then we're going to go one two three four five six seven eight normal single crochets and then on this one we're going to switch back to barbie uh, sorry to background color and then we'll do one two three four of background color and then we'll just turn and you've just got to make sure that on each one before you've got to switch on the stitch before just switch your yarns over. So you'll switch on this one, and then along here you'll switch on this one. And you've just got to count how many of each one you've got to do before you switch. So I'm going to do a couple more rows, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, I just got to this bit here. I'm actually going this way. Okay, so I'm going, I've just done three, then one, two, three, one, one, two, one, two. Okay, if that makes sense. So let me just push this pixel. I don't know, can I put it to the side while I do this? Yeah, maybe. Um, so I need to do three and then change. So I'm gonna show you what happens when you've just got like one pixel because you might be using this to help you do something that's not a Barbie. Uh, so I've done one, two, apologies if it's on the side, but like this is the only thing I can do to show you. Okay, so on this third one, I'm gonna switch to my background yarn and then I'm going to just complete that stitch and pull everything nice and tight. Okay, so for this one, I need to do my one here, but I'm not going to complete it. I'm going to just switch straight back to Barbie's hair and complete that stitch there. And then I'm going to do my one, two, one, two. My wool is tangled, so it's really getting in the way. But So I'll just do my one, two i'm going to complete this stitch with background color because i need to switch back and do my final two um stitches of the row so here's the last two one two nope not two damn it two okay pull it nice and tight so you don't end up with a little fail like i did there which i'll be covering up but yeah and then if you look at it you'll see that it's just like that one there. So that's how you do that. Okay, I'm almost finished. I am literally on this stitch right here. 
so I'm going to finish my row and then I've only got three stitches of Barbie colour left so what I might actually do is just kind of drop the, um, the Barbie colour and not put it through the background because I'm not going to use much more of it. I'm going to finish this row so I've got four more left. So I need to do five in background colour so I've already chained one I'm just going to go one bash the camera like I'm so unprofessional two three four okay and then you can probably hear sneaky in the background she wants to be out of the room uh five okay and then I'm just going to switch I'm just going to pull it up here because I know that this is the back anyway of my um of my patch so but it's fine you can't really notice that it's pulled up and then I've got three more of this colour to do so one two and then three and I need to switch back to background to finish off my patch okay so I'm just gonna chain a couple more and just kind of get that in place uh, I don't actually need to carry that through the back so one if I can get it in two okay so this pink colour is now finished with so I'm just grab my snippers I'm just gonna leave a tail for weaving in so I'm gonna cut it make sure I'm not gonna cut my dark pink okay I'm just gonna cut it here okay and then I know that the rest of it is just gonna be my background color so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another two rows of pink above the finish of Barbie's hair and then after that I'm gonna do a row of single crochets around the outside and then I'm going to show you what I do to join my squares together and how I'm going to join them onto my cardigan. Okay, right, this is not like the finished product, but I just want to show you how I'm going to join all my patches on my cardigan. So I'm just going to take my dud patch and this fresh patch that I just made, and this is all I'm going to do, because I'm going to have mine, excuse all the tails, I'm not woven these ones in. So I'm going to have them like alternating colours and look in different ways because I just thought that would look pretty cool. So because all of these have a border of single crochet around, it's going to be so much easier to try and join them. OK, so I'm going to start somewhere where I don't have an end that I need to weave in. And I'm just going to grab my needle through the corner of that one. And the very corner stitch of that one there. OK, and it doesn't really matter if you have the right side of your work or the wrong side of your work looking at you um because this is intended to be like an invisible stitch and all tails can be woven in so i've attached my pieces there and i didn't want to do single crochet i didn't want to do like any kind of stitch that goes around them i wanted to go in between so on the bit that i've just done you need to grab trying to get it close enough so you can see you want to go like through the middle of the little v and underneath and out of the V of the next one okay and then you want to pull that through here okay and then in the next one or in the other patch you want to do exactly the same thing so but kind of like in the next one so this one here I'm going to go in if you can see and then I'm going to go out of that V there okay and then sew it and then because I came out of this one, trying to get it so you can see, because I came out of this one, I'm going to go into that one. So I'm going to go in that V underneath that loop and then out of here. Okay, and then I look back at this one here and I came out of this one. So I want to go into that one and go underneath the loop like that. Okay, so whichever one you come out of, you don't want to go back into it, you want to go into the next one. So if you can see this here, you want to go, I came out of this one, I want to go into that one. Okay, and I need to go, see, because this is actually a loop, so I'm going underneath the loop and back out of there. And just bashing the camera continuously, but it's fine. Okay, and then that should give you some kind of like seamless join. And that's what I'm going to do to sew all my patches together. And that's what I'm going to do after I've put a border on all of my patches. That's how I'm going to attach it to the rest of the cardigan. So I'll see you uh, with an update of the cardigan in a few minutes. Okay, this is what the cardigan's looking like so far. We've got a hexagon this side, hexagon that side. 
all the Barbies which I made I made alternate colors I didn't just want them all one solid color like in the picture um, and then I just extended by about 15 rows to make sure that all the Barbies would fit in because I don't want a cropped cardigan I hate cropped cardigans I'm just having like a a long one that will cover my butt cheeks when I'm out because I'm planning on wearing this when I'm out and about so now I'm going to put the sleeves out the cuffs on each one and then I'll sew all these together and I join them on and then after I'll do the ribbon so let's do these bits now okay so both sleeves are on <clears throat> the length is perfect and I've just joined and put a like a little um, half double crochet row around all the barbies so I'm now ready to sew everything together and then put on the ribbing okay it's the next night I have sewn all the barbies together and I have sewed them onto the cardigan so everything's pretty much done except for the ribbon so I'm going to do the ribbing now okay quick update um, I have now I'm onto my sixth ball of yarn so this is about five and a half balls in uh, this is what's left of this one and you can probably see the remaining three are just dangling for dear life there um, so let me show you what it looks like I've just got to do three more rows around the whole of it for my uh, for my ribbon so let's have oh my god oh it smells so fresh and clean um, I've not put a stitch marker in it so a few stitches are probably going to pop out but it's fine uh, so this this is the back right here oh my god I love it yeah I'm really pleased with how it's going so my ribbon I'm not doing like you know this way I'm kind of just doing the ribbon around and around so I go front post back post so I don't know if you can like see so this is a couple of rows in so I'll do front post back post front post back post and then it just makes like a nice stretchy ribbon and I just find it less faff because if I'm honest I hate like teensy little stitches and with these nails I can't really do teensy little stitches so that's how it's looking um, but also today I went to uh, Mrs. Johnson's Emporium in Blackpool because I've got a project in mind. See, I was in London a few weeks ago and this woman, I don't know if it was crochet or if it was machine knitted, but she was wearing like this festival netted cardigan and it was like a mesh, like a mock crochet stitch. And I was like, I need one of those. Um, Googled it, couldn't find it anywhere. Eventually found it and it was like 60 pound. Um, if I can find a picture of it, I'll stick one on the screen, but I don't know if I can. So anyway, I figured if it's mesh stitch, um, I'm going to use, this was the colour it was, by the way. If it's mesh stitch, I'm going to just use a few balls of this. So today in Blackpool, I got one, two, three balls of this. Because I figured, like, it's not going to take more than, like, three, maybe four balls to make. And I think I've already got one of these as well. There it is. That's, like, three quarters of a ball of that one. So that will make a like a festivaly or beach cover-up cardigan, no problem. So I'm gonna put those into my stash. And one thing I have wanted for the longest time, because you've probably seen me um, at some point in this video, I've got like a bright pink cardigan that I adore, and it was from Boohoo. Um, but I actually got it off Vinted for like three quid. Oh, it was amazing. Um, and I wear it all the time. I wear it for work, I wear it in the house. Yeah, so I got this delivered. I have a, a yarn dealer. On a, in a Facebook group so uh, I've wanted a neon yellow cardigan for the longest time and yes you can get them online I don't want to really pay like 40 odd quid for a brand new cardigan when I can just pay my secret yarn dealer price I need to open this properly actually oh my god I'm gonna look like an absolute highlighter wearing this oh that is so pretty it's a you know, signet paddle everyday DK. Oh my god, the squishiness! I need to smell it. Mm, new yarn smell. It's really fluffy. Um, oh, the squish. It's so soft. Squish. I'm gonna be walking around like a soft, squishy highlighter. I might do like waffle stitch or basket weave stitch, and um, which will take absolutely forever. But like you know, I want it so. Yeah, excited. I just need to find a place in my stash to put it back to finishing off this. Oh, I did put a stitch marker. Good. Right, three more rows. I will uh, I'll show you when it's done. I thought I'd pair it for the end of this video with this carby because I've got the mind of a princess, but the body of a sea witch. So I'm more carby than Barbie. I'm absolutely in love with this cardigan. I'm going to be wearing this all winter 
uh, all autumn, probably into next year, as long as I don't catch it on anything because I'm quite clumsy. Drop me a comment down below if you want like an in-depth tutorial because I want to make myself a Halloween hexagon cardi. I could do with one of these in blue actually. I mean, the possibilities are endless because I have a stash that your nan would be jealous of. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. So massive thank you if you made it this far. I know it was a long one for my first video. But um, yeah, please like, comment, share, subscribe, everything that'll help the channel grow because I've literally got so many creative ideas. See you guys in the next one. Bye.